They come in waves, like in a video game. One wave rolls in. If you destroy it, another one rolls. Let's say the first enemy group enters a house next to you. They try to bring ammunition, grenades, and other weaponry there. If you destroyed them, the next group runs in and uses that ammunition, rounds, grenades. If the second group is destroyed, the third can try to run in. If all three have been suppressed, enemy mortar shelling begins. That's how they work. The mortar shelling ended and we were told on the radio that enemy infantry was moving, trying to outflank us, and so on. I realized that I was not able to fight. The image before me was moving up and down. But I had to switch on and watch the sector so that the enemy could not flank us. I realized that if something would change in that image before me and, roughly speaking, the enemy would come out, then I would destroy them. A mine flew into the house and I helped him get out of the house and covered him. He was nauseous and getting worse, but he gathered all his strength and held his sector so that they could not outflank us. In which house were the machine gunners? There. In the red one? Yes. Are you shooting from here? From here? Nah, I'm going over there. Arm wounded. Lads, anyone here? Lads. The road is under fire. One by one. I'm running first, then the second one follows, and so on. Do not stop. Let's go. At one of the positions, the Wagnerites were on the first floor. There were three of our men on the second floor right above them. One of our guys was seriously wounded and unable to walk. By that time, both the Wagnerites and our guys had run out of grenades, and our fighters had half a magazine of rounds left for three of them. I decided to pull some of our men from a nearby position so that they could just start shooting at the windows with small arms, throw VOG grenades inside to suppress them, while our guys could jump out of the second floor. The boys started to suppress enemies and Lysiai shouted to me that they were running out of ammunition too and that the boys should jump out ASAP. I contacted them and asked why they were not jumping out. They replied that they had a wounded non-walker and they could not leave him there. I started yelling into the radio, if you don't take him, the wounded man, now and push him out the window and jump out yourselves. You will stay there with him forever. And then I heard Lysiai yelling on the walkie-talkie, they're out, they're out. So, they dared to push the seriously wounded man out the window and then jumped out themselves. As a result, the wounded fighter was saved. He survived and he's all fine now. What was that? A 150 millimeters? Yeah, sort of. Might even be a tank shooting. It didn't whistle, but hissed. Yeah. We've arrived exactly on time.
You've missed a lot. They sprinkled us with phosphorus here, and you are not here. Yep, our guys are over there. Oh, God. See what's happening? The access of oxygen has to be blocked somehow. It is even burning the asphalt. Shine some light here, Sonia. That one was probably the most sensitive moment. It was pulled out of our combat mate. Our friend. Not a combat mate, but a friend. We came here together and we even took a photo together the day before. And even then, it was clear that he would not make it. It felt very hard to ask him to take a picture, because I thought he would understand everything. It really bothers me that my last words to him were, such a good day to die. And it was a beautiful day, I think it was even snowing and sunny. Those were my last words to him. And that really stunned me. Then I pulled this bullet out of him. A machine gun hit him. He was at a very difficult position. With that, he was not scared, he was dragging his mate out to save his life and he died himself. We called him Lexus. His call sign was docent. But he had a Lexus, so we called him Lexus. Lay cover fire, lads, our evac team is moving out. Lay down cover fire, our evac is out. Faster. All weapons fire. There were worries associated with the new location, urban warfare. I hadn't come across that before. With such close fire contact, with such work. There was no fear though. There were certain concerns about whether I was making the right decision, whether I was taking the right position, and so on. How do I move around, etc. But fear was not the case. If you let fear overpower you, then you are no longer a fighter. It is hard to recall all the feelings now. Everything passes quickly, since you need to swiftly solve problems, observe. In other words, there is no time for fear. 
Then, over time, you just get tired of being afraid. All you need is to complete the task and that's it. Since there were 10,000 chances of getting killed in one day, and those were just the ones that you knew of and probably the same number of those that you were unaware of. You don't care anymore. You are not afraid. You may be killed any second. And in order not to be killed, you need to act first. Any person who enters positions and holds them and does not retreat is a hero. We are used to saying these old Soviet theses, like this one's a hero, and this one's just a regular fighter. Well, they are all heroes. I believe that we showed ourselves worthy here. We've gained the experience that we needed to gain in order to progress as a unit. We made mistakes, we will consider them, but we won't talk about them. <laughs> what do you have there? Promising team of Bakhmut. Is that from old pro-Russian political party? Yes. I choose a better life. Show the other side. Who those Russians are.